in the name of Allah, the most merciful, from whom all knowledge flows. Dear students, today we are going to discuss the most important or one of the most important topics of mathematics that is complex numbers. That is complex numbers. But the question arises over here what a number actually means. A number is nothing but a symbol which either represents the total count of entities that is thing is or the magnitude of a quantity or the value of a quantity. For example, if in our, if in our family there are persons say A, B, C, D. You have to say somebody that how many members are there in your family. You will use the symbol just like this which is found. That is this number represents the total count of the entity, total count of the person is present in the family. Similarly, sometimes you will write the value of this object is if the object is named as x is 4 and type is the value. Sometimes it denotes the magnitude of the quantity. The natural that is a number is nothing but a symbol. And broadly speaking, the real numbers are the magnitudes of the actual quantities. But before developing to the topic completely, you might have heard that fundamental form of algebra, which was proved by famous mathematician Boss, who stated in the theorem that any antinomy equation, any antinomy equation has an roots. That is, same the degree. Same is the number of roots. In general, an antinomification has an roots. Take the example of x minus 3 is equal to 0. We say linear equation. Left hand side, left hand side linear polynomial, let's say linear equation here. If we put x is equal to 3, their equation gets satisfied. That's LHS becomes equal to RHS. That is, it is the root of the equation. If this root, this symbol x is equal to 3, belongs to n, which are, of course, available set of naturals. On the other hand, if we consider the equation x plus 3 is equal to 0, now, there isn't any value, there isn't any number from set of natural numbers which can satisfy this very equation. The only value which can satisfy it is x is equal to minus 3. But x is equal to minus 3, that is, minus 3 plus 3 is equal to 0. But this, but this minus 3 doesn't become that. Minus 3 does the long time. What does it mean? That is our solution is not available over here. So, this set of natural numbers was, was extended to a new set known as set of integers. Known as set of integers on the number line as. If here it is 0, if it, here it is 1, here it is minus 1. If here 2, it is minus 2. In other words, these negative integers are nothing but the reflections of the positive integers 
positive integers here reflection of positive integers with respect to the origin origin is actually this origin is nothing but but this is the reference till till late it is shown by this what we call zero it is nothing but empty circle this was the reference point it was it was discovered by indians after that we have we have one solution from my, now minus three from the set of integers because the set of nationals was extended to it okay take an example like this 2x minus 1 is equal to 0 it is also a linear equation it must have a solution then x is equal to 1 by 2 is the only solution to this equation but if this x is equal to 1 by 2 this value does it belong to m does it belong sorry does it belong to i the set of integers now this set of integers was further extended to this set of rationals set of rationals that is q set of rationals your rational numbers that is q set of rational numbers that is q that is what I trying to what I am trying to convey you what I am trying to make you understand is the fact that originally we were having natural numbers those were of course symbols the new then it was extended to set of integers once again it was extended to set of rational numbers it was near of, the, of the, that very uh, time now you might have heard about Pythagoras theorem in the earlier class let us have a right angle triangle right angle triangle whose base is one unit perpendicular is one unit then using Pythagoras theorem this hypothesis is nothing but root 2 but root 2 this root 2 doesn't belong to the set of rational numbers so a new set of numbers was introduced which is known as set of irrationals set of irrationals which was again the necessity mathematicians were bound to do it that is the set of rational numbers were further extended and the new set of rationals was introduced these sets set of rational numbers, set of whole numbers, set of integers, set of rationals, set of irrationals the whole set of these numbers is called real numbers but let me ask you one question that is what is so real about these real numbers? nothing at all because you are taking an arbitrary line you are taking a line here you are, you are using 0 here 1 it is 2 it is 3 in between 1 and 2 it is 3 by 2 in between 2 and 3 it is 5 by 2 so on and so forth and on the left hand side it is minus 1 minus 2 and so on. It's a line. It is, these are the symbols used for, for representing or for the, the points on this very number line. Now, having said already that there was there is fundamental theorem of algebra by Boss that anti degree equation has analogies. One of the famous mathematicians of the world, who was the mathematician, who was the mathematician of all the times. That is, the name of the mathematician is Leonard Euler, who was from Switzerland, greatest mathematician. That is, when he dealt with the equation x squared plus 1 is equal to 0, in the context of fundamental term of algebra, what he did that x squared is equal to minus 1. Minus 1. But as we know, x squared is always equal to 0 for all real numbers. But to solve this very equation, he had to find a quantity which when square will give equal to minus 1 but that was not available from the system already discussed before you so he introduced a new symbol that symbol was i or iota it is read as i or iota that is iota is equal to either root of minus 1 so he wrote x square is equal to x square is equal to minus 1 
that is implies x is equal to plus minus under root of minus 1 that is x is equal to plus minus iota this iota what he introduced is called as imaginary number but uh, in this sense you understand it and as an imaginary number it is not in that sense it is a, it is not only number it is actually a symbol so far introduced over here now, one thing should be kept in the new symbol was introduced as iota. Let us first see what are the properties of this iota. What are the properties of this iota? Or simply I. Real line. When we take real numbers on a real line, 
that is zero over here. Here one, here two, here three, here four, here three by two, here five by two, here minus one, here minus two, here minus three, so on and so forth. Minus infinity to plus infinity. Are you getting it? Every real number is represented by a point in the real life. On sorry, on the real life. Every real number is is having one to many correspondence with the pointers on the number line. There is no point left, which is no, no point left in the number line, which will not be denoted by a point and vice versa. Every point on the number line is denoted by a real number. But in the context of, in the context of this, take once again x squared plus 1 is equal to 0. And in the context of fundamental theorem of algebra. Here, x is equal to plus minus i, means iota. But this should have been here somewhere, on the real line. But every point is occupied here. Every place is occupied by real numbers. But where the question naturally arises, where this lies then? That means it lies somewhere else. Not here. That is why Master Argon used Master Argon, Argon together, you know, either they used one more axis over here, known as imaginary axis. Imaginary axis, which we will discuss in the next lecture. Imaginary axis. And here, we have now two roots of the equation, this. That is one root is plus iota, the second root is minus iota. Now, what is a complex number? A complex number is customarily you will write a complex number by z. That is the z. Z is equal to x plus iota y. X plus iota y. Where x is the real part, real part of z, and y is the, this y, it is the imaginary part of z. Don't be confused, I y is not the imaginary part, but y is the imaginary part of z. And it must be, it must be uh, kept in view that this plus over here is not the ordinary addition. Is not the ordinary addition. Nor this iota is any number. No doubt it's called a imaginary number, but it doesn't work like that. Actually, a complex number is the combination. Is the combination of two components. One is the real component, another is the MIB component. And every real number, if a number is real, if a number is real or real, that the image report of that, the magnitude of the image report of any real number is zero. And if any uh, number is imaginary, that means the real part of that is zero. That is, if here x is only y, x is missing, means it is imaginary. If x is, uh, if x is existing and y is missing, means it is completely real. Now, what I told you that this plus should not be taken as addition. It is the combination of the two components, they work together to denote the number. Which will be discussed in detail on the complex plane or organ plane later on in the next chapter. Now, let us first of all, let me give one more example to you to make things clear. That is, take this example. I will simply work from the, this complex, work from the concept of the, these complex numbers. Okay. Take this example. Here, let us solve x4 plus 1 is equal to 0. Naturally, there will be four roots. It is obvious. There will be four roots because the degree of the equation is four. Isn't it true? Now, what I will do, I will write x4 is equal to minus one. Isn't it true? That means x square is equal to plus minus under root of minus one. It is obvious. That is x square is equal to plus minus iota. That's all. Right. Because under root of minus one is iota. And remember this, that x is equal to x is equal to 
iota x square is equal to under root of iota and under root of minus iota. It is obvious from here. X is equal to iota. X is equal to iota but sorry, x square is equal to iota, x square is equal to minus iota. That is x square is equal to x square is equal to plus iota, x square is equal to minus iota. X square whole square is equal to x square whole square, x square is equal to plus minus under the minus one, under the minus one, iota, x square is equal to this. Uh, x is equal to plus minus, x square is equal to x is equal to, x is equal to, sorry, x is equal to plus, plus iota, and x is equal to minus iota. Now something wrong goes there. x4 plus 1 is equal to 0, x4 is equal to minus 1, x square is equal to plus minus under the minus 1, x square is equal to plus minus iota, x is equal to, x is equal to plus minus under root of iota, plus minus under root of minus iota. It is x is equal to plus minus under root of iota, comma, x is equal to plus minus under root of minus iota. Are you getting it properly now? Any problem in your work, please tell me. It is x is equal to plus minus 1 by under root 2, what I did? I multiplied the root 2 and divided by root 2. It is 2 iota. Clear? Here, x is equal to, here x is equal to, plus minus once again, 1 by root 2. That means it is divided by root 2. Within the radical cell, I am getting 2 iota. Are you getting it properly? Please have a look at this board once again. If you have any problem, please tell me. It is x is equal to plus minus 1 divided by under root 2. It, is, it can be written as this one. It is 1 plus iota square plus 2 iota. Isn't it true? Because iota square is equal to minus 1. I can write iota square 1, 1 and minus 1 gets cancelled once again. We are left with the same thing. Now, here, x is equal to plus minus 1 by under root 2. Under root of. It is 1 plus iota square minus 2 iota. Any problem? Once again, it gets cancelled. You are left with this. Once again. That is, x is equal to plus minus 1 by root 2. Under root of. Under root of. This is 1 plus iota whole square. And x is equal to plus minus 1 by root 2. This is equal to 1 minus iota whole square. That is, x is equal to plus minus it is 1 plus iota divided by root 2 comma here is second other two roots are here 1 by root 2 means 1 minus iota divided by root 2 here also plus minus clear now you your two roots are here the first root is 1 plus iota divided by root 2 second root is minus times 1 plus iota divided by root 2 the third one is plus 1 minus iota divided by root 2 and the fourth one is minus 1 minus iota divided by root 2. You can examine. These roots have been the symbol iota not there, not introduced by linear error. What will happen? You will not find the roots of this very equation. This very equation. The, 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 the roots are 1 plus iota divided by root 2. 1 minus iota. Sorry, minus times 1 plus iota divided by root 2. The third one is 1 minus iota divided by root 2. The fourth one is minus times 1 minus iota divided by root 2. Each number, each number is of a different class. You, each number is of a different class. That is, here we have 1 by under root 2 plus 1 by root 2 iota. It is the combination of two parts. Representing a number, representing the root. That is, this is the real part, this is the imaginary part. It is where the complex numbers come into play. Are you getting it? Are you getting it properly? This is the concept, this is the first root. It is the complex number, this is the complex number, this is the complex number, this is the complex number. This is what I told you, any number of the forum z is equal to x plus iota y. Where x is the real part, y is the imaginary part, is called a complex number. 
is called a complex number. Now, let us go to algebra of complex numbers. First of all, one th thing should be kept in mind that these, they are order exam, order exam. That's order action. Some, some, some students call, call it order action. Order action, which was given by which already defined. For real numbers, that's A greater than B, B greater than C, A is greater than C, or A is greater than B, or A is greater than B, or A is greater than B. That is, that is not talked about here in case of complex numbers. That is, the order axiom in case of complex numbers is not talked about. The matter is all together different. Let us discuss it in a uh, uh, different, different lecture, in third lecture or fourth lecture. Here we have z is equal to x plus i to y. This is the complex number. Now, how we how we add this? Let us go far. Let us go far now to the addition of complex number. That is operation of complex number. First operation is addition. If here we have a complex number, say z one is equal to x one plus i to y one. X one is the real part. Y one is the imaginary part. Let us have second complex number z2 is equal to x2 plus iota y2. The proper way of addition, that is law for addition of these complex numbers is we add real parts and we add imaginary parts. That is z1 plus z2 is equal to x1 plus x2 plus iota. Let's take iota common. Iota y1 plus y2. The, the new number is of the form something real, something matter. This once again a complex number. You can add this, you can just generalize the, uh, this concept. That means that we have closure law. That is, if you will add any number of any number of these complex numbers, the result are, that's the result is once again a complex number and nothing else. That's called a closure law. Let me remind you one thing here. Closure law. For example, some you if you will uh, multiply the velocity of light by any number, you will get new velocity. That velocity is not available. That means that doesn't obey the closure law. Or if we subtract two natural numbers, the resultant is not always a natural number. For example, one natural number is two. If we subtract two, three from it, you will get minus one. It is not a natural number. That means it doesn't follow the closure law. But here, if we add or subtract two complex numbers, if we add or subtract two complex numbers, it is once again a complex number of the same nature. That means it follows the closure law. Addition already before you. Now we are going to discuss permutative law. Permutative law, permutative law says that if z1 and z2 are two complex, are two complex numbers, then z1 plus z2 is equal to z2 plus z1. Written in every book, you can have it from any book. z1 plus z2 is equal to, you can try it over here, substitute these values only, you will get this. That means permutative law, permitted law holds to do it. That is, you can interchange the order. Similarly, associative law holds. That is z1, z2, z3 are three complex numbers. Then z1 plus z2 plus z3 is equal to z1 plus z2 plus z3. What does it mean? This means you can add the complex numbers as per your choice without any restriction. You can add z1 plus z2, then you can add z3. You can add plus z2 plus z3, get the result, that result must be must be added to z1, you will get the same result. That means uh, a suitable number is good. Now, let us go to one more thing that's called as additive identity. For every complex, just as the real numbers, a real number for every real number A, for example, A is a real number. Their existence in the set of integers for a while, first of all, let me take A as an integer to make the things very easy. Let A be an integer. Their existence a special number, special integer within the set of integers that is zero. 
that is for every other integer a, a plus 0 is equal to 0 plus a is equal to a. That is this, the, this special, special integer doesn't disturb the system at all by addition. That this 0 is called the additive identity for integers. Here in complex numbers we have Z is equal to, for example, Z is equal to 0 plus 0 iota. And it is written as 0. 0 is equal to 0 plus 0 iota. Is the, is the additive identity of complex numbers. That is, if for any other complex number Z is equal to X plus iota by, we will, we will have Z plus 0. This 0 is equal to 0 plus Z is equal to minus again, this plus this, this plus this, this is once again x plus i to y, this is equal to again equal to z. That is here, additive identity is 0 plus 0 i to or identity element, you can say identity element in addition. Now, we, we will talk about additive numbers. As real numbers we are having, for every integer, let me take a talk of, of integers first, for every a, for every integer a, or for every real number a, there exists a special number, special real number in that system, in that set, minus a, such that a plus minus a is equal to 0, which is the identity element. Proving here that this minus a is the identity inverse of this and vice versa. Minus a is the identity inverse of a. Similarly here, for every complex number z is equal to x plus iota y. There exists minus z is equal to minus x minus iota y where the two will be added. That is z plus minus z you will get 0 is equal to 0 plus 0 iota. Means this is this minus z is the additive inverse of z because it nullifies z completely in operation addition. Now let's take, uh, talk about the second operation for complex numbers. That is multiplication. In case of multiplication too, if you will multiply two complex numbers, you will again get a complex number. Proving here that multi complex numbers are closed under multiplication too. That is, if z1 is equal to x1 plus iota y1, and z2 is equal to x2 plus iota y2. Let's multiply them. z1, z2 is equal to x1 plus iota y1 into x2 plus iota y2. Yeah, means multiply by x2 plus iota y2. When we will multiply, we will get x1, x2 plus iota x1, y2 plus x2, y1, iota plus, plus iota multiplied by iota. That's iota square. That's minus 1, minus y1, y2. Now, let us combine this and this. This is x1, x2, because both are here. Minus 1, y1, y2. Keep it as it is. This. Get iota common. It is equal to iota x1, y2 plus x2, y1. Iota is outside. This means this is a real quantity plus some imaginary quantity. Once again, the multiplication of two complex numbers is again a complex number. It is not true for any two. You can have any number of complex numbers, go and multiply, you will get once again complex number. It will not go outside the system. Okay, now, this is the closure law of multiplication. Now, commutator law also holds, that is, z1 and z2 is equal to z2, multiply by z1. If z1 and z2 are any two complex numbers, then z1 multiplied by z2 is equal to z2 times z1. That is, or doesn't have the impact on this. You can prove it, you can take some x plus plus i to y1, z plus x to plus i to y2, take LHS, take RHS, you can easily do it. No problem. Now, assertive law of our multiplication. That is, if we have z1, z2, z3, three complex numbers, and if we multiply them, that is z1 into z2. First of all, we are multiplying z1 and z2. That result is uh, multiplied to z3. It is same as z1 into z2. 
That is here what it means. First of all, you are multiplying sir to sir three. The result is then multiplied to sir one. Here, first of all, sir one and sir two are multiplied. Then the result is multiplied to sir three. You will get the same result. That means a state of the whole story. One set of complex numbers, which is also proof for real numbers. Now, let us go to here the specific element. That is just like in real numbers, we have for every non real number a, there is non zero real number I mean to say, for every, every real number a, we have one number a, a not equal to zero, remember this. For every real number a, there is one over a. When both are multiplied, one over a, we are getting one. Keep it as it is. One is multiplied. Like here, I went to a multiplicative universe, let me first of all tell you what is multiplicative identity. For every complex of z is equal to x plus i root of y, there exists, there exists a special number, one is equal to one plus zero iota. Such that the z into one is equal to one multiplied by z is equal to one again z. You can check it here. That is z into one means x plus iota y multiplied by one plus zero iota. You will once again find it is equal to z. That means this one is the multiplicative identity or identity element for complex numbers. In case of multiplication. And now we will get to go to multiplicative inverse. For every complex number, for every number a, we have here a not equal to zero, we have here one over a not equal to a not equal to zero. We have one over a, so that when a is multiplied by one over a, we will get one. Then the identity element is open, then it is sure it is obvious that this is the inverse of this, a and a is the inverse of one over a. Because the result is the identity element of same operation. Nice? Now, here, if we have z is equal to x plus iota y, x plus iota y, then let's find this multiplicative inverse. It is 1 over z. It is 1 over x plus iota y. Isn't it true? It is also written as this, z inverse. One plus But just in case of real numbers, we usually rationalize. If we have 1 over root 2, we multiply it by the rationalizing factor in numerator and denominator. So that the basic law of mathematics is, is, is this, that we have to go from complex to simple. Here, the situation is complex because in the denominator, we are having iota is more, uh, more complicated than if it, it, it is in the numerator. So what we will get? We will multiply 1 over x plus iota y multiplied by x minus iota y divided by x minus iota y. It is equal to x minus iota y divided by x square plus y square. It is equal to x divided by x square plus y square. Plus minus iota y divided by x square plus y square. And this is the multiplicative inverse of this. That means if you multiply x plus iota y with this number, you will get once again 1 is equal to 1 plus 0 iota. Are you getting it properly? Now, let us, now let us have a look at distributive law. Because distributive law involves both operations. That is addition as well as, addition as well as multiplication. Say, for any three complex numbers, z1, z2, z3. z1 into z2 plus z3 is always equal to z1, z2 plus z1, z3. As is true for real numbers. That means here multiplication distributes one addition. It is distributive law. Z1 into Z2 plus Z3 is equal to Z1 and Z2 plus Z1 and Z3. Are you getting me properly? It is so easy. You can verify it. Taking Z1 and Z2 plus Z1 and Z2 plus Z2 plus Z2 plus Z2 plus Z2 plus Z2. And substitute the value in the LHS. Later on, substitute the same value in the LHS. We'll get LHS squared. So that means this will always be fine. Now, how to divide, how to get quotient of two complex numbers? Let us have 
let us have one quotient. Now, quotient, quotient of complex numbers. Let a state that one is called x1 plus iota y1 and z2 is equal to x2 plus iota y2. Then let us find, let us find z1 divided by that is quotient. It is equal to x1 plus iota y1 divided by x2 plus iota y2. Remember that z2 is never equal to 0 because division of 0 should never occur. It is not equal to 0, because 0 plus 0 iota. Then what do we do? We have do, uh, we try to commit iota in the denominator. Just like we do rationalization in case of real numbers. What we do over here? x1 plus iota y1 divided by x2 plus iota y2. We, what we get? Multiply it by this same quantity but changing the sign x2 minus iota y2 divided by x2 minus iota y2 y2. What you will get? This will be the answer of the, that is this will be the question. In the try to, I uh, once I told one of my students uh, that here we rationalize and he asked me what this is called. I uh, smiled and I told him let's call it that's iotas. But it's not true. This is not the word anywhere existing, but I used the word here yeah, to make the uh, things very simple. Now let us let us talk about equality of complex numbers. Let us talk about equality of as I already told you that order exile is never talked about in case of complex numbers. Power equality is talked about. That is if z1 is equal to x1 plus iota y1. That is equality. Equality of complex numbers. Equality of complex numbers. Here z1 is equal to I took z1 is equal to x1 plus iota y2. And let's take z2 is equal to x2 plus iota y2. If z1 is equal to z2, then real part of z1 is equal to real part of z2 and imaginary, and imaginary part of z1 is equal to imaginary part of z2. It is, it is the rule with which we can equate to complex numbers. That is here, x1 is equal to x2 in the above. x1 is equal to x2 and y1 is equal to y2. Then and only then the two complex numbers are equal. This was regarding the equality of complex numbers. But one more thing you have to keep in view. That is, in case of real numbers, we have understood it well that if the sum of squares of two real numbers is equal to zero. For example, if I, if I am taking two complex numbers A and B, I am taking squares of those two complex numbers A square plus B square. If their sum of squares is equal to 0, then surely A is equal to 0 and B is equal to 0. No third choice, no second choice. Are you getting it? But it's not true for complex numbers. For example, if we will take Z1 is equal to 1 plus iota. That's 1 plus i. And Z2 is equal to 1 minus iota. Just one square. First, I didn't do Z1 square. Is equal to 1 plus iota whole square. And z2 square is equal to 1 minus iota whole square. Are you going to be? It is z1 square is equal to 1 plus iota square plus 2 iota. It is z2 square is equal to 1 plus iota square minus 2 iota. Are you getting it? It is z1 square is equal to 2 iota. Because iota square is equal to minus 1. And this gets cancelled. It is z2 square is equal to 1 minus 1 which is minus 2 iota. Uh, are you sure about it? Now, add the 2. Z1 square plus Z2 square is equal to 2 iota plus minus 2 iota. What happens? It is equal to 0. Sum of squares are 2. 
complex number is equal to 0. But none of them is equal to 0. One, Z1 is 1 plus iota. Z2 is 1 minus iota. Neither this is equal to 0 nor this is equal to 0. But we have some is equal to sum of square is equal to 0. Which is not true for the real numbers. Unlike of real numbers, here Z1 square plus Z2 square is equal to 0. Doesn't imply that. Z1 is equal to 0, Z2 is equal to 0. But if the product of two complex numbers is equal to 0, if the product, if the product of two complex numbers, two complex numbers is equal to 0, then one of them, one of them, then at least one of them, at least one of them should be equal to 0. This also true for the real numbers. Now one more thing is talking about here in case of in case of complex numbers. That is complex conjugate. Complex conjugate. We know that see it is simple. Complex conjugate. Conjugate conjugate here means if we have complex number z1 is equal x, x plus x1 plus iota by 1, for example, then it is com complex conjugate is simply obtained by changing the sign of this imaginary part. That is z1 conjugate is equal to x1 minus iota by 1. x1 minus iota by 1. And it is obvious that z1 conjugate whole conjugate is equal to once again x1 plus iota by 1. That is conjugate of the conjugate is the number itself. It is obvious. Now here let us take if z1 is we will add them. If z1 plus z1 conjugate let us take z1 plus z1 conjugate it is equal to x1 plus iota y1 plus x1 minus iota y1. What will happen? This and this goes cancelled. We are getting to x1. Isn't it true? That is z1 plus z1 conjugate is equal to 2x1. Are you getting it? Or simply x1 is equal to z1 plus z1 conjugate divided by 2. That is real part of z1. Real part of z1 is equal to what? z1 plus z1 Z1 conjugate means the original complex number plus its conjugate divided by 2. The number, number plus its conjugate, conjugate divided by 2. Again, let us have the subtraction. Let Z1 here, what is already written there, x1 plus iota by 1. And Z1 conjugate is equal to x1 minus iota by 1. Let us subtract Z1 minus Z1 conjugate is equal to x1 plus iota y1 minus x1 plus iota y1 sorry minus iota y1 and you will get what it will come equal to 2 iota y1 that is y1 the imaginary part is equal to z1 minus z1 conjugate divided by 2 iota simply that is imaginary part of z1 is equal to the number itself, the number minus its conjugate divided by 2. I, I would have means 2 I. I do it. Understand it? This is the, this is all about this uh, conjugate and its property. But one thing I would like to mention over here, that is, This is this is this, this this property and this property is often used in the exams. But the real part of the argument is equal to this, imagine part of the argument is equal to this. It must be remembered well. And more moreover, we will go to the uh, to, uh, to talk about the representation of complex numbers in the complex play. But, but not in this lecture. That will be discussed at length in the next lecture. Inshallah.